Okay, in this video, uh, I'm going to show you how to do a couple things on a graph page that are pretty essential. Um, and if you don't know how to do them, you're, you're going to be kind of stuck. So let's get to it. Uh, I'm going to add a graph page. So I'm doing this in a, a brand new document, but uh, I would have started a new problem if I was in the previous document. Um, and what I want to do is I'm going to graph uh, x minus 3. So you just type whatever the function is here, x minus 4, and then x plus 1. Okay, so press Enter. And here it is. Uh, you can uh, hide this if you kind of, I, th I think it's, uh, hmm, I don't know, it's either shift click on it or control click on it, that contextual menu will come up. You can hide that because it's kind of in the way. Um, so here we have it. Uh, you can see something is happening up here that we're not seeing. So what I want to do is press menu and go to window and I'm going to just zoom out and see what happens. So you pick the center of where you want to zoom. Uh, I don't know what factor it zooms by, maybe a factor of two. Uh, let's find out. Uh, I'm going to try to zoom right on the origin. Uh, so, like, probably a factor of two around the center. Um, so I can see that up there, that maximum, but not particularly well, so I'm going to do it one more time. And now I can see it, but everything is kind of squished. So uh, to get out of this tool, I'm going to press Escape. So Escape's up here. And I'm going to go Menu. Uh, missed it. Menu, and then uh, Zoom, and Zoom Box. So zoom box, you have to, you're have you going to actually make a rectangle, and then that rectangle is going to become what you see on the screen. So I'm going to click the top left corner of the box and go to the bottom right. Uh, you can actually go in any order. It doesn't really matter. Um, well, you have to go along a diagonal. So like this, uh, that's pretty good, except I have all this extra stuff here and here. So uh, I'm going to try again. Maybe this. So when I let go, this is going to become the, win the that rectangle becomes just the window you see. That's pretty good. Um, so the next thing I could do is I could manually set this. I don't really do this very often. I like to just zoom out, zoom in, and zoom box. But uh, maybe I want, you know, just kind of integers for some weird reason. Uh, negative 5 and then 15. So I'm just typing it in. So that was, uh, there you go. Now you got your integers. So that was menu and then window and then option 1 for settings. And then you can just type it in. That's good if you're given a problem where you're given the graph and you have to kind of mimic it on your calculator and then figure things out. You always look at the minimum, maximum, x, and y, and then just set your calculator up exactly the same. Uh, so we have that. Uh, the next thing I want to do is find an x-intercept, uh, which the calculator calls a zero, uh, and eventually you will also call a zero. Maybe you do already. So I'm going to press uh, menu and go to option six for analyze graph, and option one is zero. So what you do is uh, you click to the left of it. So I want this x-intercept right here. I'm going to click to the left of it and just drag until I get to the right of it and then release it, and it gives me that. And then I'm going to have to do that again and again. Um, so this is actually not the way that I do it. Uh, what I do, uh, let me undo that, is I, I'm going to press uh, tab to get this bar back, and I just grab zero, which is the equation of the x-axis. And now what I'll do is menu, option eight for geometry, who would think, and then option one for points and lines, and then option three, so menu eight, one, three. Uh, you'll hear me probably say that in class a lot. Uh, click the first graph you want, click the second graph you want, and you can see at the bottom here it found all of them at once. So I'm going to escape so that this tool goes away, and then uh, click and drag these so they're not really in my way anymore. Uh, and there are my x-intercepts. And then uh, there's one more thing that I want to do on this page, and then another quick thing. Um, I want to find the maximums and the minimums. So uh, if you go to menu and then analyze graph, analyze graph is usually where you find you know, you're trying to analyze a graph, so that's where you're going to find uh, ways of doing that. So minimum, uh, again, you pick the function. So now I have more than one function, so I have to first select the graph, but you can see down here it's telling you what to do. Graph, uh, this graph. And then the lower bound means to the left, so I have to be to the left of the minimum, and then I drag until I get to the right of the minimum. Uh, it's kind of weird, actually, if you look at the right edge, it's always saying that the right edge is the minimum value, because it is on that interval, and then once you pass that minimum, it kind of locks in. So I click one more time for the upper bound, and then you can see this tool goes away on its own. You don't have to do anything. Uh, so the minimum is uh, when x is 3.528, let's say. Uh, the y-coordinate is negative 1.128. Uh, so that would be the minimum, and the maximum virtually identical. So it's going to be menu 6, and then 3 for maximum. Click the graph, a little to the left of it, drag until you get to the right of it, click again, and there you go. 
Okay, so there's one more thing that I want to do. So what I'm going to do is insert another graph page. So that's, I'm going to press uh, doc for and then graph. Uh, there's a faster way to do that, I think. Uh, I just, for whatever reason, don't do it. Control menu. Uh, nope. Control, oh, control doc. Let's try that. Control doc and then graph. Uh, that's a faster way to do it. So what I want to do is I want to regraph this. So done. And then press tab. And I'm going to add the graph of just uh, f of x equals x. So y equals x. And I need a better window. So I'm going to zoom out. What? Uh, zoom out. Do, do, do. Click. OK. And maybe zoom box, menu, and then zoom, and then box. So I want those three intersection points is really what I'm trying to get here, like that. And then if you remember intersection points, the easiest thing to do is menu eight, and then one, and then three. That'll get them all at once. So I could do that. I could do menu uh, six, four, intersection. That's going to give you uh, one intersection point at a time which is fine, it's just not all of them at the same time. So I'm going to undo that and do menu 8, 1, 3. And you want to like memorize that because it's so much faster. So I have that. Drag them around so you can read them or maybe hide some other things. And there you go. So that's uh, a lot of the basic things you need to be able to do on your calculator in terms of graphing. Hope you found this helpful and good luck.